military aid. So let me see if I can find it. So I I tried, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how much aid has been sent to Ukraine. And, and I'm going to be honest, I couldn't find like a, a, a consistent number for it. Um, I saw numbers for the amount of aid Ukraine has received ranging from 80 million to like 160, sorry, 80 billion to 160 billion. I, I saw all kinds of different numbers. I saw some people say the U.S. has given 40 billion. I seen people say they gave 120 billion alone, that Europe's mashed it, that Europe's done a lot less. My guess, and I'm just going to go on the conservative side of the average of what I saw, is that uh, Ukraine's received probably about $120 billion total. That's just the number we're going to go with for the sake of this, this live stream, because I don't think anybody really knows. And that's military aid, budget support, food aid, uh, just cash. That's kind of everything. And once again, it's probably more than that. Because keep in mind, there's the money from the U.S., there's the money from the EU, there's humanitarian aid from neutral countries, the UN's thrown in a bunch of money, the IMF's thrown in a bunch of money. <clears throat> that seems reasonable to me. I'm just going to take a look, pause for a second and take a look at the chat and see if anybody wants to dispute that or has a num another uh, number that they would like to, uh, they, they would suggest um, more accurate than that or is that a, is or is that a, a fair amount to say about 120 billion dollars okay someone says a tenth of a trillion which is pretty much what i have we're just going to say that for the sake of this once again take that with a massive salt mine another big problem is just ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries on earth i mean russia is one of the most corrupt countries on earth too but we really have no idea like where any of this money went. Did it actually go to Ukraine? Did it go to um, <clears throat> some some other stuff like that? Did it go to uh, like like the just was it embezzled by either like the Ukrainian government or the EU or the military industrial complex or international aid organizations? We don't really know. But we have here a budget. So we're going to take a look at what the Ukrainian budget is, and that'll put the $120 billion into context. So the Ukrainian budget that was approved uh, last week, or I guess that might, is that last week or two weeks ago? In the last uh, couple weeks uh, passed. So the Ukrainian budget is currently at $90 billion for 2024. And their current revenue is forty-seven billion. Now I don't know what's included in the forty-seven billion. I did try to find how much of that is tax revenue, how much of that is from the grain deal, how much of that is from various other things. I'm not really sure how. I would imagine a majority of that is international aid in one form or another. If we're going to take like the hundred twenty billion and divide it in two, um, that's what like sixty seventy billion dollars a year. So if their budget's around ninety billion, then yeah, the Western Economic Aid would basically cover their budget, or the vast majority of it, combined with whatever else they can scrape together from taxes, the grain deal, that sort of thing. The point is, I was trying because there's this claim a lot from the pro Russia side. Um, that Ukraine, uh, everything in Ukraine is basically paid for by the U.S., um, that if it wasn't for Western aid, the government would collapse tomorrow, that the army, the civil service, the basic functioning of the government is entirely paid for by Western donors. And uh, that seems accurate. I mean, once again, people can dispute this if they want. This is the Kiev Independent. This is a pro-Ukrainian source. As always, all the sources I've been using because I, I do. So the difference between pro-Russia and pro-Western sources is pro-Western sources will be factually accurate, but they will spin it. Like that New York Times article accurately described the amount of territory that had changed hands, but they spun it to say that Ukraine's offensive made gradual progress. 
Whereas I find pro Russian stuff, it's just complete. Like they just make shit up. Like um, right wing fake news is worse. I I remember during the whole like ethics and video game journalism stuff, you had all this insane stuff that there's going to be a coup, that there's a no fly zone, that like Delta Force had seized like the the uh, video game journalism review uh, archive server in Germany. And, and absolutely all of that was complete nonsense. So, once again, these are uh, Ukrainian sources. So, I'm trying to see. I couldn't find what the budget was from last year. Uh, my point being, let's assume just for the sake of argument that the $40 billion uh, or the $50 billion they have comes from Ukrainian sources, that that is not aid money. That means for the next year, they need about $40 billion more dollars from the West to cover that. And uh, once again, it's like, this is also assuming that all of the money is going to the, the right place. That This is assuming that like the $90 billion is actually... Like, I don't know how much of that is in corruption, how much of that is in waste. Like, who even knows at this point? I, I'm just trying to use these. These numbers are very abstract, uh, to be honest. But my point is, uh, Ukraine will basically have to receive a similar amount of funding to what they've received for the last two years in order to balance their budget, um, in order to continue paying for it. The defense budget is now... Uh, more than half of the, the the total budget. So the Ukrainian government is basically uh, assuming Western aid stopped tomorrow, and that this this income that they have is all legitimate state budget. Um, they would only be able to fund their military and nothing else. They wouldn't be able to pay civil servants. They wouldn't be able to do roads, electricity, any of that stuff. And this is the situation that they are in. And I bring this up because it, it just signals they're in complete and total economic dependency. It's not that they rely on the West to support them. It's not like they, uh, they're they getting additional aid. Um, it's stuff like that. It's like a, a Korean War scenario wherein if... USA dried up tomorrow and the EU wasn't able to put forward more money, the whole thing would just be a, um, a complete disaster. Now, the EU was riding to the rescue, but um, yeah, that, that didn't work out. So the EU was going to give... Ukraine, $500 billion, I think over the next five years or something like that. Or let me see how many years it was going to be. Um, let's see here. Where is it? I'm just trying to find the exact amount. Um, Okay, leads on blocking of five hundred million dollars of vital Ukraine aid. I think it was literally five hundred billion. I'm just trying to find it. Um, the okay, so Reuters offers Ukraine. Maybe it was only fifty billion euros. Uh, I've heard different amounts. Okay, well we'll say it's fifty billion, and I I misspoke, and I um okay I misspoke. It was it was fifty billion. It was not five hundred billion. Uh, or wait a minute. Okay, bill pushes bill to five hundred billion. Okay, we'll just say it's fifty billion. I'm sorry for getting confused. All these numbers are just come out of like place to another. My point is though that um, okay, so let's just take a look. So that's fifty billion divided by three. So that's about seventeen billion dollars a year. So that's not enough to make up the deficit, but that's enough that helps out a lot. I mean, the deficit goes down from 43 billion to like 20 something. And the idea is they can make up the rest from the UN, from other from other groups, from the United States, who so far been paying the lion's share of the money and probably just non-EU donations. 
Now, what wound up happening is Hungary and Slovakia vetoed this. Um, they, uh, they completely vetoed this whole thing. Uh, Hungary, because on the ground, there's a couple things. Uh, the EU, I think, sanctioned a bunch of Hungarian banks and has, like, been threatening Hungary. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, hopes the veto would be lifted, increased. Yeah, so they, they sanctioned a bunch of Hungarian banks or something like that. Um, and I think they froze a bunch of, like, the Hungarian government's assets um, and some stuff like that. So Hungary just vetoed it. They're like, until you, like, lift this and let us do our stuff again, then no, we're just going to keep vetoing it. Um, there is also uh, a veto by the uh, the government of Slovakia. So let's see. So Hungary also said there's no point in spending, like, another $50 billion on this war when it's clearly lost. And it's just going to be, like, it's just a waste of time. Uh, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Now, I'm trying to find it, but basically Robert Fico said, um, Ukraine is the most corrupt country on earth. I don't want to send them any more money uh, because of how uh, corrupt they are. Uh, so, yeah, it's just saying we're not going to. Okay, here we go. Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Uh, let's see here. Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Uh, uh, new Slovak Prime Minister uh, Robert Fico said when he addressed the summit on his Facebook page on Friday, we are ready to help but not militarily because I do not believe in a military solution uh, to this conflict in Ukraine. So uh, the thing is that because the EU operates on a um, consensus model, Slovakia can also veto any of these, these funding packages. So we now have two countries that are probably going to veto these. Uh, and yeah, so that, that $50 billion is not going anywhere anytime soon. Even if they were to pass it tomorrow, um, it's still way behind. Like, it's still behind. It's it's still taking months longer than it needed to. If it, if it took months longer than it needed to to even pass, it's going to take months and months more to get this, start getting this money to Ukraine. So they're facing this massive budget deficit. Aid's not coming from the EU at nearly the speed they needed to come. And so... Uh, Zelensky has decided he is going to take decisive action to deal with this. Uh, Zelensky has announced that we need to advance at least 500 meters every day. Because if you declare, like if you pass a resolution, say, it's kind of like with um, Obamacare. It's like Obama just passed a bill that said everybody has health care and everybody has health care because that's how life works. 